to Kim for inviting me. Um, I'm used to working with her in my capacity as the programme director of the MA programming uh, and curating at Birkbeck, where we normally meet in Edinburgh and discuss um, what it is to curate experimental film festival, um, films which in their cultural significance and materiality operate across the NAP borders. So this encounter feels like a departure, but it's also maybe a bit of an arrival as well. And um, I, I would like to thank her for allowing me to come and sharing my research um, into television vision um, that crosses borders. So I'm now going to try to uh, share my screen. Janet, could I, sorry, I forgot to tell everyone that I'll be recording um, the session. So if you if you don't want your uh, face to appear on the on the screen, um, then it, it's a good idea to turn your, your camera off. Um, of course, we don't mind your, your face being on the screen. You'll disappear to the bottom when the presentation starts. But I just wanted to let everyone know that we that we are recording it. Sorry, Janet. No worries. Thanks. OK, so um, this presentation then uh, is offered as a reflection of my research into contemporary tele um, transnational television culture, which is a study in cultural theory and, in, and it advances an encounter informed by feminism and feminist theory in both television studies and theory. Marked by jagged contours, which can't be captured in binaries and characterized by any easy center peripheral models, um, my work aims to make sense of the geopolitics of women circulating and being in the television world as representational characters, material images and textual traces, as actresses and creatives and producers, as well as a discourse on television culture, both locally distinct, um, while at the same time syncretic in uh, the interaction and transfer across borders. So my theoretical endeavour connects the forensic detail of local TV crime series with a global vision of a original scripted TV format in cross-border motion over the last decade. And to this end, I train specific attention on uh, specific on a TV scripted format known as The Bridge, which comprises of the Swedish-Danish co-produced series Brun and five so far adaptations, which is the US-Mexican The Bridge, the French-UK, uh, the Estonian-Russian The Bridge and again, Peak, as it is known outside of the territory. So what interests me is how uh, geopolitical categories of women and women are being produced and re reconfigured and reconstituted under transnational or cross-border, border crossing conditions. And in repeatedly revisiting the crime scene of the bridge at different times and historically specific moments at uh, different border crossings and situated spatial locations across the world, what I'm seeking to do is to map diverse media institutions and uh, cultural, um, cultures of knowledge and power defining and circumscribing how women as material forms uh, creatives and actresses crisscross and appear in the world. Janet, so, can I just say that the um, just in case you are um, sharing a PowerPoint, there's nothing on the screen right now. There oh, we go. Yeah. I, I am sorry. Um, That's it. Is that right? Can you yeah. see it? Yeah. Can you see it now. Can you see it now? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't quite know what happened there, but there we go. So sorry about that, everyone. Okay. So. Um, Global flows then of media technologies, migration and the unfettered mobility of capital has reworked the old uh, logics of TV domination into new global initiatives and television forms. The cultural politics of gender and sexuality suggest got in contain borders and local domains, but spill into the world, often in messy and ambiguous ways, often to gain a different material existence. 
As already noted, um, my current research project is carried out um, and deeply rooted in the original scripted TV format, The Bridge, and its various um, reiterations focused on the gender politics of TV representation in the context of transnationalism. But today what I want to do is pull out of that work the question of what it is to tell stories of women's invisibility, visibility at, at the border, a place of somewhere and anywhere, here and nowhere, as a boundary event of what Trim Minha calls, quote, elsewhere within here. In answering, I consider some of the broader challenges for researching transnational television as I train uh, my attention on textual matters and the materiality of, of television, the textual stuff, the stories, the actual media object that circulates. And I do so as a way to explore a material way of thinking in and through the audiovisual essay as a form of practice-led research to help guide and address questions about texts which cross borders. But I also do so um, in, as, a, as a way for, for us as, as um, scholars uh, to, to think about how we might work with the audiovisual as a form of practice-led research to re rehearse um, and even perform the argument as a way to extract new knowledge and new ways of thinking. Now, I'm not here to champion the audiovisual as a simple replacement for more um, traditional forms of scholarship, but instead to think with a multidisciplinary approach to think through the materiality and the material conditions to combine different theories with the audiovisual essay to create something by thinking across borders. So starting with the question, I, um, this question, I explore that, that something through um, the practice-led research, the audiovisual essay, and I want to use it to think through theory and how in that encounter alternative routes for approaching uh, transnational TV objects and for understanding its systems of representation and networks um, which constitute uh, its, its global uh, circulation might begin to emerge and reveal themselves. So allowing us to look with fresh eyes to make um, new discoveries and ask different kinds of questions. But I also um, want to think of how this way of working might help us transform and expand and rethink the image bank of television works um, from which new knowledge can be retrieved. So um, in many ways, then, the uh, aim of this presentation is to really talk through that thinking process of what it is to think about uh, through the cultural politics of representing women, women across borders. And I'm thus interested in um, sites of encounters, audio, visual essay, practice led research, or co productions. The transnational as a series of paradoxical encounters. And I want to begin with some key challenges for me, questions which I sought to explore um, in, um, in making the audiovisual essays, which I'm going to share with you. So um, um, for me then, in studying the transnational, um, I co was confronted by a series of, of questions. First of all, what do we actually mean by the um, transnational, definitions of the transnational? You know, how do we define those cross-border activities? For, um, has been pointed out more than once, the transnational um, is often a very imprecise term. And as media, um, the, the media historian of transnationalism, um, Michelle Helms has pointed out, often the transnational is obscured by the, the national, hidden in how it has been absorbed into textual forms, institutional practices and cultures. Next, how do we deal with the perceived mobility, interactivity and versatility of the flow of media produced in complex infrastructures of power as well as to borrow um, from uh, Doreen Massey's term, the power geometry determining circulation. 
how to make sense then of the current um, iterations of, of social, technological and cultural change. And I don't mean change as reactive or as some kind of struggle or even an act of resistance, but really as the very condition of our contemporary modernity. Furthermore, how do we highlight contradiction and the necessary ambiguity of texts like um, the, the formatted bridge, you know, the bridge which is fit for international travel as a language of the new media culture? How do we hold the idea of the finished or canned program, the format, but also its adaptation in our minds all at the same time as a concept? And this question, um, for me, grew out of my increasing unease at the compare and contrast approach often adopted in trying to understand the different adaptations where added, um, where value judgments and hierarchies of taste started to emerge as, um, as scholars would jostle with ideas of what is the authentic, what is the real, um, original um, rather than to sort of think about the holistic idea of, of the format itself. Next, um, I want to ask that through this exploration of the transnational, what is it to tell stories across borders? What happens when you make art in two places simultaneously? Where is the common ground, the mystification and compromises? Handle the transnational and here bilingual process. How do we make sense of the different ways of telling the same story again and again? How to make sense of the um, specifics of the telling, the narrational paraxes of location, as well as deal with the question of time and um, spatial temporality in the telling of stories. And this is something, because uh, I was just saying before everyone started, um, that I was thinking about this in relation to what um, Marik Jenner had been saying and how she wrestles with this discussion of the transnational and the domestication um, within you know, Netflix text. And, and here I want to draw out those the implications of what she's thinking here. But I also ask this question because, you know, I often hear that Nordic noir is so very over. And indeed, um, uh, P.F. Berndt, um, the producer of those DR dramas like Vobre Nelson um, and uh, at a, a conference in, held in Aarhus in, in 2018, said that she didn't want TV, Danish uh, TV commissioning on what she amused. Still, I think the way in which these stories um, travel mean that some territories are only hearing those stories for the very first time in 2018. But also, what do we make um, of the eight year gap between the uh, Brun in uh, 2011 and then the remake, um, which was very different, of uh, Pagan Peak in 2018. And remember that, it, that Pagan Peak didn't even come to the UK until 2019. Thirdly, um, how do uh, audiences um, respond um, to these, uh, text, uh, these television texts, um, which also presents us with new sites of investigation, but also a new set of challenges? including how are local, regional, national and global identities mediated, articulated and experienced? How do concepts of collective identity of race, gender, sexuality, nationality, ethnicity, class, religion and the politics of location, how does all this operate within global cultural economies and changing media environments? And how do we make sense of how local, national, subnational, and regional identities and affinities unite, complete, compete, and interact um, with collective cultures in the age of globalization? Now, those studying audiences are better qualified than I to answer those questions, but nevertheless, they remain key for me as I think through um, you know, these issues through the audio visual essay. Um, next, how do we make sense of taste and value formations across border, borders? How in the collage of style, the scrapbook of production codes, uh, camera work, colorization, post-production, 
how do those production codes um, and very nation specific definitions of quality and legitimacy start to emerge? The cultural preferences for particular images and sounds, particular performances and, act, and acting styles, how do they take shape across borders and within texts in different locations and how are they made sense of? How do aesthetic values and the formation of critical judgments differ across territories and how are they made and understood across borders? For localized counts as an authentic cultural expression within particular national territories. Put simply then, how to make sense of how fields of cultural production situate these television objects and institutionally and culturally give them value in the process. Next then, fifth is how to deal with the question of convergence and divergence. And convergence and divergence often at the same time is also a key issue um, in studying um, transnationalism in television. Convergence in blending or merging of different media forms and texts um, into one another without obscuring the underlying political and material aims of each. Point, I would suggest, to a deep ambivalence embedded right into the heart of the transnational discourse, as well as the way in which discourses of power and knowledge construct representational subjects. Indeed, when we think of conversions, what do we even mean, you know, as we use it very differently with regard to, you know, what is converging, i.e. text or production practices, media systems, you know, public service and commercial, social and cultural practices, distribution technologies and audience reception. And furthermore, what happens when something converges on, on platforms and within digitalization uh, processes, um, what converges in relation to languages and working practices, theories and ways of thinking about television. Jana, I, I just um, we we seem to be stuck on the first uh, oh. slide of your of your presentation. So I, I'm not sure if you've um, moved on in your presentation. Yeah, oh, sorry, um, I don't quite know why this is happening. Let's try that. Does That's that it. That's it. Perfect. Oh, yeah. I see. I've got to come out and go back in. OK, you haven't missed much. I haven't been okay. <laughs> working through lots of slides. You've just been looking at a lovely slide. OK, thanks a lot. Um, OK, and so uh so then yes yeah, so then i wanted to guess so then there's the question of dealing simultaneously with paradox and paradoxical um manifestations um not only of, of of what it is to kind of make television um in two places at once but what um that looks like and and, and how to allow to speak um the the Kind of speaking nearby without um, one experience silencing the other. So again, to put this simply, how can we make visible the transnational networking and remediation of audio uh, visual material, the multi-layered negotiations among local, regional, national and international um, interests, you know, related to media policy, identity and cultural value. But also what gets lost, what gets silenced and repressed, um, or even discarded and disappears almost um, uh, entirely. Um, and last, but no means least, um, how to deal with this issue of globalization and fragmentation of the universal and difference of the double storytelling worlds of, you know, which involve a social critique possibly woven into the fictional uh, story worlds um, of the paradox of globalization um, to intense localization and the tension between um, homogenous by and Rob others um, often belonging to a male canon of theoretical intervention. So it, it's these questions then which prompt my engagement with how ideas of women are traveling, um, her stories told, her voice heard, in particular locations, and um, how her presentation um, is made, positioned, imagined, and recognized or not in other situations. And in one space, um, 
And one such space is through um, the audio visual uh, practice led research and um, offered now are a series of audio visual essays. It's a trilogy I, I made um, in, in 2018 um, with Catherine Grant. Um, which um, is basically situating um, at the exact same moment in each of the pilots. So I'm in, in the films that you're about to see, um, I, I'm looking at the pilot for the um, uh, the, the Swedish Danish uh, Bruin, uh, the UK uh, French the Tunnel, and the uh, US Mexican um, the Bridge. Um, and in so doing. I want to think about how you know these uh, the materiality of these um, uh, moments reimagines gender justice at the border. So um, I'm now hopefully um, will be able to try to share my screen again. So you're going to have to tell me if this doesn't work. Is that, can you see the screen? Uh, we still yeah. see your your presentation. Uh, right. Okay. So. Um, Let's try again. Uh, can you see the screen now? No. So if you do the sh the share, okay. if you've opened it up on if you've opened up the um the the Vimeo on your on your on your screen on your desktop you should then when you do sh open a share tray you should get the option to select that yeah I'm, I'm, yeah strangely i'm not which is a bit odd um is it open on your desktop uh it is it is does it can you see it now no um okay well i'm having a lovely time watching my own videos here um so when you click on the open share tray, what do you see on that? See. On that? Oh, okay, it's it's a, it's now arrived. It's, okay, I think it's arrived. There we go. That's it. So then, if you if you yeah. click on the yeah, perfect.
So now I'm going to stop sharing. Let's see if I can reopen. I'm guessing that that's not come up. Mm, no. Um, I'm sorry, everyone. I'm not used to using Teams to teach with. We use something called Collaborate. So. Uh, do, do you what do you see in your when you open up the share tray? I, I don't see anything in the share tray at the moment. Is it open on your desktop? Um, again, it's just it, I don't quite know why it takes a while to just register. So this is terrible, appallingly bad. It's, it, it's um, okay. The, the digital situ online situation is challenging <laughs> for everyone. Don't worry. Um, if you open it up on your desktop, when you open the share tray, it should it should come up. We have the stars. So that, um, there we go. Let's, hopefully this will work. OK, can you see that? Can you yeah. see that one? Great, OK. OK, so um, I should have warned people. I was going to warn people about the gore on that. Um, that's that was very bad of me. Um, so just uh, obviously post warning. OK, so um, Nancy Fraser's thoughts on the politics of framing justice in a globalised world or what she calls um, a transformative approach uh, offers me a steer on how to make sense of these audacious opening moments of um, the uh, co-production, the, the Danish-Swedish co-production of, of Brun, as well as its scripted reiterations at the US-Mexican uh, border in the bridge and the subterranean adaptation inside the Euro tunnel linking France with the UK uh, in the tunnel. In these transnational um, in-between spaces of somewhere and anywhere where jurisdictions collide, otherness is encountered and cross-border cooperation unavoidable. It is a female fin um, fatality uh, with a body quite literally split in, uh, in half before our very eyes that conjures this imaginary transnational television space into being. She is what happens at the border. There is, of course, nothing particularly new or novel in the sight of the female cadaver, which has long been a common generic feature of TV crime. Such an image of desecrated femininity speaks to a range of societal inequalities and discrimination of uh, inequities in power and wealth told through the body's storytelling proximity from inside a national broadcasting territory. And in the shock and surprise of its act of, of splitting its temporal non-sovereignty and how the bisected cause creates a momentarily a momentary destabilization where borders shift and under other uh, and are undermined, exposed, crossed, made and remade. It is the female corpse split in two at the border, which translates into an affecting bodily encounter. Not only does the materiality of the audiovisual present how effective this uh, story is, but also this effect initiates the story. It initiates the novelty of the story. But it also goes on, um, but it also does so in a very evocative and affecting way. So um, the next um, uh, audiovisual that I, I say I want to show um, is... Uh, hopefully you can see that, is um, Body uh, Matters. Um, and the, the moment that we're going to be looking at is, is, is when um, the body is discovered to be not one, uh, but, but two. So let's have a look at um, 
So it's again, it's just a bit slow. Can you see this? Yeah. Jag har en begåvad gissning, men jag behöver lite mer tid. Preliminärt kan jag säga att hon dog någonstans för sex, åtta timmar sedan. Ja, stämmer bra. Hon ringde hem vid halv sju och hamnade på bromsrättsaktivitet. Men det är en annan sak. Det var därför jag ville att hon skulle komma hit. Vadå? Titta på henne. Excusera, jag ska komma sen sen två. Jeter un œil, c'est un cas intéressant. Souviens-toi de ce que je t'ai appris. La vraie oreille, la jarre ancienne aux yeux. Victor hémorragique. Il n'y a rien qui le cache dans le cerveau des chiens. Et c'est un mauvais bras avec les yeux tout bleus, mignon. Pas mal. Et qui a le bras bien délimité? Regarde les jambes. Morning, Sonia. Okay. Cause of death right here. Needle in the base of the spine and into the brain. Quick. Easy. I was going to say, I told you, I'm going to be a good one. Love. Another one. Another one. You've been by the sea? Under the ground, but it's much blacker than now. Not recently. Much blacker. Good. Don't give him the satisfaction. Get your hands dirty. What's that? 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 This one's a Hispanic female, late teens, early twenties.
Right, let's see if I can do this efficiently. <laughs> Yay! No. <laughs> ah, yes. Great. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So um, here, then, I think um, Sagan Naran proves to be um, best able to conduct a forensic autopsy, um, better able to make sense of the pathology of the course corpse and the chemistry of its decay. This is in part because she's given longer as the duration of the sequence is slower to deliver its chilling revelation that the corpse is not one but two different women. In brisk contrast, US cutting rates mean Sonia Cross spends the least time with the body. She's told the death, the cause of death and more and she is more focused instead on the precision of the crime. And because of the more obvious racial differences between the two victims, victims doesn't need to spend um, any time pondering the shades of a paler corpse. Sonia Cross thus, uh, thus appears um, to be navigating a different kind of television storytelling ecology than Nora or Elsa Vassman, um, a politics of editing which dispatches narrative information with relative efficiency, but also doesn't quite grant permission for this new kind of representational um, female agent detached and in exile within herself. But also in the manipulation, in the slowing down as I engage with the media imagery, the haptic touch of the female detective becomes almost a caress. It is in those textual material moments, distinct categories of victim and heroine uncomfortably blur. But it also further reminds me of what Sarah Ahmad has said about the stranger. And it is the very gesture of getting closer to the stranger that allows the figure to take its shape. So mobilized further still then in this textured assemblage of discourses linking gender subjectivities with sexual politics of mobility and spatial justice of nationalism, whiteness, ethnicity and uh, uh, citizenship lead me then to the third um, of, of the essays, um, which is uh, law and, and fear. And again, this, this takes another similar moment from the pilots, um, a, a moment when um, sort of three women have been trafficked um, uh, uh, across borders. Uh, so let's have a look. I left some food pouches and a few other bits to help you get by until I find a more permanent solution for you. Just read this. Such a count to know about the mentality of the country. Oh, 
Okay. So, okay. So, rescuing um, vulnerable women um, by men with ambiguous motives who ferry them from spaces of danger where social and legal institutions fail to protect them speaks to issues of reframe, reframing justice in a globalized world of which Nancy Fraser speaks. Transnationalism and the shift between across borders of countries of the frame reshapes gender oppression before our very eyes. Three men operating, working at the margins of society, help three women struggle for recognition, socially, economically, representationally, within their respective territorial states, with none of these emancipatory projects beginning or ending appropriately, satisfactorily, or with any dignity for these women. At issue, then, is that terrain of recognition in terms of who can claim justice and who controls access to it. But it is also about the way, um, as we as a society argue about social justice for women within territorial borders, as well as the stakes of those caught in the deep tangle of immigration laws in the first place. The capacity to de- or re a vulnerable woman takes on far more complex, more sinister flavour when it overflows national borders, and the tale of the more commercially inflected television broadcasts take up that story. These women become vulnerable to cross-border forces where struggling against one set of local patriarchal practices of sexual or economic exploitation are resuscitated and reconstituted within another national context, where having no legal documentation leads to no representation under the law. These women become the regressive of the border of separation and racial discrimination, of hatred and fear, of humiliation and powerlessness. Bringing these scenes from across the globe together into a transnational composite reclaims historical uh, historic st struggles for social justice, uniting women separated by continents, as well as borders of individual stories and private struggle, gives a renewed sense to the idea of solidarity. What is revealed in the transnational are the globalized struggles of the precariat, composed of migrants, racialized women, those from working class or impoverished backgrounds, how with low wages and economic hardship, reduced state support and or dysfunctional justice systems, women are left isolated at home and at the same time, the results of removing a woman from somewhere to an undefined space of nowhere, as in the French UK and the US Mexican versions, makes visible a new sense of vulnerability, a sense of being nowhere, an unsettlement within and between cultures. In creating a disorienting space of, of geography um, and alternative cartography of female experience, of navigational movements involving bodies, spaces, sexuality, subjectivity and identity, embrace, but also scale up different, often unanticipated issues of recognition, representation and social injustice, and modifies understandings of what we might mean by women's rights and emancipation today. So um, to conclude then, um, 
I, I want to just briefly reflect on some of the lessons of how this practice-led research has helped me to address this question of what it is to tell stories across borders, to produce stories in two places at once at the same time about women. I, I don't want to for one moment claim that these questions are in any way resolved, but they are, for me, reorientated and they reorientate ways of thinking um, about them through this process. In thinking through the materiality comes into view, at least for me, the dynamics of transnationalism, not only as a way of researching that allows us to expand the lens to look at the multidimensional, multi layeredness of contact and interaction, but also of the of the process um, of of the making shades one's thinking about the cultural uh, politics and theorizing of women and women's bodies across borders differently, as material form, but also as the material conditions and as situated knowledge. Framing of space becomes about the frames of space, which involve research performativity in terms of how to depict and to question the ways in which we expose the world through the practice of our research and how in handling the very materiality of the text allows us to look differently, to guide our thinking within, across and in between the split screen, the competitive uh, sequencing of the original material and quotations. It helps to rethink, compare and contrast modelling as multi-layered and intersectional and where thinking is structured in the crossing, the constant reframing of references, points of departure and arrival. Such an approach pushes theory to its limits, a kind of a yes but, and caused me maybe to abandon a, um, a theory of transnational feminism, instead to look at methodology or a methodology, a way of thinking about these matters. There is, of course, I would suggest a misappropriation of the textual uh, text, a sense of me controlling the story that moves and flows from one territory to another, manipulating time, slowing it down for the purposes of sustained contemplation and interrogation as a way to kind of make sense of what I'm looking at. But it also reveals to me the actual performance of my positionality, of my intervening into, into the knowledge itself. And finally, the audiovisual, I think, interfaces with the transnational in evocative and affecting ways. Each scene offers a, um, a palette of crime um, that has an immediate transnational intelligibility. Um, each carries particular ideologies and materialities of values and taste, of politics of generic forms, of the audiovisual and aesthetic styles within the very fabric of its directional travel. And in many ways reveals how value is actually made um, in the border crossing, accumulation of, of value in circulation, as well as giving um, insight and it's, it's helped me think about um, an understanding of the uh, TV format as um, a parlance test, uh, a kind of in, in terms of how a scripted form is or format is scraped and repurposed for economic and cultural reasons, a game of citations, uh, adaptations and remakes. Still, it is quite clear the national never disappears. Rather, it is where the local and the global intersect. In the exhilaration of the visual and the acoustic intensity, it's felt a sudden rush of television adrenaline, defining an original high concept scripted TV series like The Bridge. This is about textual materiality of what an exceptional, out of the ordinary contemporary television experience might look like, how it might sound and how it might feel like in the world. So these are just some of my initial thoughts and um, I thank you very much for your patience and for listening.